gonna sing a new song Shout it out louder than before Let the whole earth sing Let the whole earth sing by His grace There is a sound Hear it all around Worship is rising People crying out Want to sing a new song Shout it out loud and then before Let the whole earth sing Let the whole earth song of praise, a song for all of the redeemed. Let the whole earth sing, let the whole earth sing. Never the same, he's taking my chains. Freedom in Jesus, power to save. Jesus, shout out His name. I want to sing a new song. Oh, shout it out louder than before. Let the whole earth sing. Let the whole earth sing. It's a song of praise. A song for all of the redeemed. Let the whole earth the whole earth hallelujah, 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 sing hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let the whole earth sing. Let the whole earth sing. It's a song of praise, a song for all of the redeemed. Let the whole earth sing. Let the whole earth. i
gentleness, Jesus. More and more of your peace, O Lord. More of your joy, O Lord. We need more of you. More of you. We want you more and more. We want you. 
TGP family and TGP global, it is good to be with you, to get to worship with you, and to sit around God's word with you again this week. We have been in a series just at the beginning of our summer series, and, and, and it's talking about God being the God of the little, whatever little means to you. Well, I, I can think about being little very, very practically. I'm not the tallest person in the world, and in fact, in the days we live in, uh, half the children I know are now taller than me as well. And, and I am very familiar with that feeling, and in fact, I've had it since I was a child, where I could be in a crowd of people, and I couldn't see what's in front of me, because I'm not that tall. And the reality is that, yeah, I spend a lot of time on my toes trying to, to see and, and every time I did that, sometimes it would get the attention of people around me and they'd say, oh, you can't see? And then maybe they'd let me get in front of them and, you know, some kids not being wonderfully nice might have told me, that's too bad that you can't see. But there's something that happens to us when we're in circumstances where we, we feel small, little, limited. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been in a, a maybe not a, a natural circumstance of, of size and height? Perhaps you're, I don't know, 6'3", unlike me. And then maybe there are some circumstances that we can be in that, that are like a sea of circumstances that we feel like we're drowning in and the sea is larger than us and we don't know what to do to get over it. 
I want to speak to you a little bit today about how God can come and meet you in whatever your circumstances is. Whether you're little, short, like me, or whether the, the situations you are facing feel or seem insurmountable to you today. Let's pray as we get started. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that, that in it is everything that relates to, to life and godliness. And so as we open your word today, I ask that you would speak, speak clearly, speak into our situations. Lord, I ask that you would speak like never before. Open our eyes to see wonderful things in your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to be reading from, from the Gospels today, and we are going to be in Luke chapter 19, and I'm going to read from verse 5 to 9. I'm reading from the NIV version, and in Luke 19, verse 5, it begins to unpack a story. It says, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. Verse 2, a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. Verse 5, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he, being Jesus, has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Wow. What a profound account in scripture of Jesus meeting people. And not your average type people, not, not, not the kind of people that you think he might meet, but, but, but a wonderful thing to see that in Luke's gospel, the account of Jesus meeting someone with a limitation, an everyday person, who had a limitation, and in meeting him, he changed Zacchaeus's life. Zacchaeus was lost in the crowd. Yeah, he wasn't your average guy. He was big in other ways, but the fact is, he had a desire to see Jesus, but he was too short. He was too little. He couldn't do anything about his situation. It was out of his hands. Yeah? There was a lot in within Zacchaeus' hands. The fact is, he was a chief tax collector, not just a tax collector. He told people what to do. He made it happen. He, he, he had the power to affect other people's lives. And he was wealthy. He had benefited from it. The reality is you and I, we all have limitations. No matter how powerful we are or wealthy we are or intelligent we are or good looking we are or even how tall we are, none of that causes us not to have to live without some kind of shortcoming, if you will. And sooner or later, our limitations become clear to us and clear to God and sometimes clear to those around us. Sometimes we try and joke away our limitations. We act like they're nothing. We act like they don't matter. But deep down, we know they matter, and God knows they matter too. And in this situation, Zacchaeus had come to the point of desiring Jesus so much that he was willing to expose his shortcoming. He was able to expose that thing that made him little, 
small. And he was willing to run ahead of the crowd, the Bible says. And not only did he run ahead of the crowd, but he found the best vantage point to see Jesus, a big sycamore tree. He climbs up into the tree and he is sitting there because he does not want to miss Jesus. You know, the reality of life is this. The one thing you don't want to miss is God's presence. That place where God wants to reside in your life, that encounter that he wants to have with you, you don't want to miss that. I know in this world there are other things we don't want to miss. We don't want to miss the big game, whatever the the sport of, of, of your choice is. Sometimes for us it's that we don't want to miss that party. For others of us it's we don't want to miss that big business deal. We can't afford for life to pass us by. But can I tell you the reality of life is this? You can't afford to miss Jesus. So there he was up in the tree. And verse 5 says this, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down and at once welcomed him gladly. When Jesus comes, when he meets you, he comes to say something, to do something. He wants to come close to you and I. And our job is to respond to his bidding, respond to his call. You know, sometimes we know that God is speaking to us. We know that God is saying something to us, but we kind of blank blank him. We kind of decide that there's something else we don't want to miss more than catching what God is saying to us. And today I want to encourage you, it's worth it to stop and respond to the voice of God, the prompting in your heart, that knocking on your heart's door. Whatever it is that Jesus is saying, respond to it. It's interesting that Jesus calls Zacchaeus by name. I guess he would have been well known in the town. People would know him, but otherwise, know this, God knows your name. He knows everything about you. He knows your situation, he knows your limitations, and he knows what you need better than you do. Because our reality is most of what we need is really what we want. And we have so many deeper issues that need the touch, the loving touch of God. So Jesus saw him. He understood Zacchaeus' weakness, and he wants to meet us in our weaknesses as well. Even when we feel small, little, insignificant, God remembers us. There's a couple passages of scripture in the Old Testament. In, in, in Psalms, we, say, we see where where. God's people, the children of Israel, would worship him, give him thanks. And one of the things they gave him thanks for was the state that they were in. It says this in Psalm 136, 23. It says, it says he remembered us in our low estate. His love endures forever. He freed us from our enemies. His love endures forever. Jesus knows where we are at, and he's not going to forgive us, forget us, even when everyone around forgets us. He remembers us. He remembers us when we feel small and weak and tired and frustrated or insignificant. God is right there. God's response to the children of Israel is heard in Jeremiah 31. It says this in verse 3. God speaking, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. Verse 4 says, I will build you up again, and you, virgin Israel, will be rebuilt. Again, you will take up your timbrels and go out to dance with the joyful. Wow. God loves us, you and I. He loved them the children of Israel back then, with an everlasting love. And it is through that everlasting love and loving kindness that he draws us close to him. 
I love that part of that scripture where it says, and I believe God is saying to you today, if you're feeling like you're in a low state, if you're feeling small, overcome, overwhelmed by your circumstances, that, that Jesus remembers you. He knows you by name and he will build you up again. You will have joy again. You will sing again. You will be on top again. But this is part of your process right now. What you feel, what you're going through, is not the end of his story for you. Be encouraged. Well, Jesus called to Zacchaeus, and Zacchaeus gladly came down, the Bible says. And he comes down out of the tree, ready for whatever. But the people have something to say. And the reality of our lives is people will always have something to say. This is what they said. He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. That's all Zacchaeus is. Zacchaeus is a sinner. He's a tax collector. He's, he does what he does. He is what he is. Sometimes when we're trying to make a change in life, when we've shifted, when, when we're trying to do things differently, even it is, if it is trying to stand on your toes and look around a crowd of people, people pick up on those things and, and, and they don't see your effort to do the right thing. They only remember what you've done and who you've been. And here the people are reminding Zacchaeus and, and apparently trying to let Jesus know that, that, that he's hanging out with the wrong crowd. When you're trying to make a shift, people don't see the change in your heart always. They don't see the effort you're making. Or to them it is so minute that it really doesn't matter. But it's interesting to me that Jesus saw Zacchaeus' desire. And can I tell you, he sees yours too. Wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, if you are trying to make a shift, trying to make a change, trying to move from what you've been into what you know you should be, however small it is, Jesus is going to meet you there. What those people who said that statement didn't recognize is what became clear later after Jesus' death in Romans 3, 23 and 24. It says this, for everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. Wow. God makes you and I right in his sight. Not the sight of others, but his sight. Because Jesus went to the cross, died for our sins to free us from sin. And that same Jesus was the Jesus who called Zacchaeus out of the tree. The people called him a sinner. Jesus says, I'm coming home with you. I need to. I must stay with you today. It most likely was not just a meal. It was a breaking of a fast. And he would have spent some time. He probably stayed overnight with him. But he said, I must come. It's true, Zacchaeus' life was a mess. He'd made lots of mistakes, and not only had he made mistakes, he'd messed up the lives of others by the way he dealt with taxes. But Jesus still came. He still met with him. He still called him out of the tree. He saw the shift in Zacchaeus' heart, his willingness to do whatever to meet with Jesus, and Zacchaeus responded to it. The same Jesus that not long after would go to the cross and die for his sins and yours and mine to make us right in the sight of God and to free us from the penalty of our sins. Can I tell you today, Jesus wants to visit your heart. Maybe you're listening, you'd say, that's nice. Um, I made a decision to follow Jesus a long time ago. That's great. But he still has business to do with you in your heart. 
Maybe there's a place in your life where you need to make a shift in your thinking, in your attitude, in, 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 in any kind of behavior that you have. Maybe there's more he's requiring of you. Or maybe you didn't know today that Jesus makes you right in the sight of God because he went to the cross and died for your sins. Today's your day then. Jesus wants to come and visit the home of your heart. And he wants to come and walk you through life differently, just as he did for Zacchaeus. He came to make everything Zacchaeus lacked right. So in this moment, Zacchaeus, in his state, he does something. He finds boldness. And there's something that happens when we, we connect with Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes and gives us the boldness, the courage to do what wouldn't be natural to us. To do what even the enemy of our souls is telling us we shouldn't do. He stood up and took responsibility. Zacchaeus says this, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. You know, sometimes we say sorry for things, but we still live under the guilt and the shame of it because we haven't gone to the depth of it. We haven't exposed it for what it is. And we haven't understood that when we confess our sins, when we give God the right to come in and look at it and lay it bare before him, he makes us fresh, clean, strengthens us to do the repair work as well. And so in this moment, he says, yeah, yeah, I know what I've done. And my desire is, is, is to live differently. And so he gives away half of what he has already. That's where he begins. I'm changing the posture of my life. I'm going to live differently. But he didn't stop there. He recognized that he also, according to his culture, had to make up in multiples of what he had stolen from people. He said four times. I'll pay it back four times. We don't know how much money that actually left Zacchaeus with afterward. But he did it anyway. Here's Jesus' response in verse 9 of Luke chapter 19. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. Jesus often speaks of himself as being the son of man. His, his goal, his plan was to come and to search us out, even when we feel small, to search us out in circumstances that are beyond us and to save us, bring life to us, to free us from, from, from what ties us off, up and makes life difficult. Our job is only to make that shift in our hearts, to do what we have to do to see Jesus. Our job is to admit that things have gone wrong and to ask him for forgiveness. And we see time and time in scripture, time and time again, that Jesus comes and makes up for our lack, makes up for our limitation. Whatever your limitation is today, know this, God is the God of the little. God is the God of those of us who feel small, insignificant, or find ourselves in an insurmountable situation. Will you pray with me? Jesus, we come before you and we thank you for this account in your word and what it says to us and about us. Lord, you see the people who are trying to make changes, good changes, positive changes in their lives, and I ask that you would meet with them in significant ways. Lord, that they'd be able to say, yeah, Jesus has met with me. I feel the love of God. I feel the presence of God. I have the assurance of God. 
And Lord, for those who don't know you, I ask that they would cry out to you and say, Jesus, come near me. I want to see you. Meet me as I make a change. Meet me as I have an open heart. And Lord, for those who are in need of comfort today, would you pour the ministry of your love and comfort upon them? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Today as you listened, if you decided you were going to let Jesus into your heart, or if it is that you are struggling through a situation that has you feeling small, get in touch with us, reach out to us. We pray every week and we'd love to add you into the prayers we're praying. God bless you. Hey everyone, thanks so much for being here and worshiping with us. Uh, we had a great time in worship and we really hope that you did as well. Uh, we really hope that you just continue to stay connected with us. You can connect with us at TGP Connect on Facebook and Instagram, and you can also find us on YouTube. We hope that you continue to give uh, in this season and every season. Uh, it's something that continues to support the church and the mission that's going on here and also around the world. So uh, we hope that you continue to give in this time. Thanks so much for being here again, and we hope to see you next time. See ya.